Holy crap! I'm a millionaire! <laughs> if you would have told me 15 years ago your old buddy Josh would be a millionaire, I thought you were crazy. And I don't have a million bucks in my portfolio. I'm just saying when you factor in your overall net worth. I'm a millionaire. I can't believe it. Actually, I'm more than a millionaire. Um, and the bulk of my net worth is in my house. By far and away. But that's not making a millionaire. Yeah, it does. You ever know how they tax your estate? <laughs> if if you're not a millionaire because your house isn't including that, then you don't know how the estate tax works, man. Because your estate tax is all the assets you own minus your liabilities. That is what is subject to your estate for estate tax. In this case, we still have an estate tax. It's just my estate tax exemption is well above what my uh, taxable estate is. All right, but your estate is your overall asset. Let's just have a million dollar house. We'll say two hundred thousand dollars of uh, of a mortgage. That's eight hundred thousand net worth, and then you got four hundred thousand in an IRA. Your net worth is one point two million. You, my friends, are a millionaire. Even if sixty three percent, sixty six percent of your net worth is tied up in your home, you are a millionaire. Just fact. And your estate. If you lived, well, you see Massachusetts, you'd have a taxable estate in that regard. And I don't think any other, I don't even think Oregon does. I don't think any other state has a uh, taxable estate of a uh, million dollars to subject yourself to an estate tax. Massachusetts used to until a couple years ago. Now it's a two million. So just think about this. You live in Massachusetts, you bought your house in 1977, you know, in South Boston. And now South Boston is all the where the cool kids live, all the tattooed hipsters, you know what I'm saying? And so your you know, hundred fifty thousand dollar house you bought in South Boston, Charleston, Charlestown, whatever it's called, is now worth two million bucks. All right, I'll just that, use that for an example. And you got two hundred thousand dollars in IRA. You now have an estate tax in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. And that my friend is a fact jack. But you don't have a million dollar. Oh yes you do. Yes you do. The Commonwealth of Massachusetts assumes you have a two point two million dollar taxable estate. Now you get about $2 million estate tax exemption, but you're still going to have a taxable estate of $200,000, even though the bulk is in your real estate. It doesn't matter. All these idiots out there, oh, you don't have a, you're not a millionaire if you, unless you have a, a liquid portfolio. They just don't know what they're talking about. They simply don't. Uh, in fact, remember, it's 675000 When George W. Bush was president, it was 675 was the estate tax exemption. So if you had a tax, if you had a state over 675, you had a taxable estate. If you had a million dollar house and not another freaking penny, you had an estate tax due on what was that 325. It's just a fact, just a fact. In fact, it's even worse than that because how does an estate tax get paid if everything is tied up in real estate? And this is an issue. This is why we used to do these life insurance because the life and islets and uh, irrevocable life insurance trusts and whatnot. Uh, just basic life insurance, even. Life insurance, if you own it, is in your estate, by the way, just FYI. No, it's not. Yes, it is. Life insurance, if you own it, is in your estate. Just a fact. Anyway, so what we'd do is we'd say we got to develop some liquidity, and that way, if you have to, if your heirs have to liquidate stuff to pay for the estate tax, we don't want them to have to liquidate a real asset that's not very liquid and can have very, uh, it can be sold based at a fire sale because people know you're trying to sell it because you're the heir, and the reason you're trying to sell it is to liquidate it so you can pay estate tax, and they're going to get lowball you on the, uh, the offer to buy your home. Wait, this used to happen all the time. But if you have some liquid assets, a state, a life insurance or something like that, uh, then we'd, you wouldn't have to sell it at a fire sale. You could say, no, we, we don't have, because a lot of times the estate tax is due, I, I can't remember, 60 days, something like that, 90 days after the uh, date of death. So you got to get that money going so you can pay your stupid governor. Governor! Or uh, you know, stupid Obama or George W. Bush. Why are people on this road so slow? It's a weird. Okay, at least that guy's going left. Every time I get on this road, people just go slow, slow, slow. Pope Rodriguez, slowest mouse in Mexico, the cousin of uh, Speedy Gonzalez. Slow po man, slow Pope Rodriguez. You gotta be careful, that guy. All right, so put in the show notes after, after you follow the like button. Why do you have to be careful around Slowpoke Rodriguez? Anybody know? There's a reason you got to be careful around that guy. And if, uh, if you guys are cool, you'll know what the reason is. you got to be careful around Slowpoke Rodriguez. He's the slowest mouse in Mexico. And he crushes, by the way. Mel Blanc, 
What a freaking legend. That guy, he did all the voices. Isn't that crazy? No blank, block, whatever. Anyway, so your old buddy Josh, with my real estate and my retirement account, with my total portfolio, I'm a millionaire. Literally 15 years ago in 2008, I did not have a pot to pee in. Two brand spanking new bouncing babies, all right? Uh, a girl who is eight years old, a girl who is five years old, two Irish twin bouncing baby boys. Uh, dude, it was, market's falling, income's falling, stressful time, dude. And I wouldn't have had it any other way. And uh, you fast forward 15 years and I'm a millionaire. And I got more than a million bucks in that worth. You know what I'm saying? I do, it's crazy. You look at me back when I was growing up in Peaks Island, Maine, worry about the freaking with my orange and purple money that my mom would give to me to go to the store to buy stuff I don't think we could buy cigarettes with food stamps but as memory serves I'd sell I'd buy some with food stamps and get cash back and wish to buy cigarettes for her if that I can't remember but uh, you, you you could buy a cheap product with a $10 food stamp and uh, they get pissed but sometimes they give you cash back or a $5 food stamp and you could use that cash to buy cigarettes um, anyway and then come back home from uh, school with no uh, worry about it. You know, no heat would be in the house because my mom couldn't afford the oil bill or whatever, and have to use the electricity off the range to try to heat the house if she paid the electric bill. You know, you can't, you can't get your 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 school clothes dirty because you only had like two pairs of school clothes, you know, for the whole year. And see, this back in the day when you have to have school clothes and play clothes. You did not play in your school clothes because your school clothes, you're still trying to look respectful. Nowadays, people want to look, everyone wants to look like they're poor. I'm going to wear my pajamas to school. Yeah, like, back in the day, poor people did not want to look poor, so they tried to keep their school clothes nice and clean. And they'd play in their run-down clothes that I get from my cousin Dale in California that he sent to me. Um, and I'd love to get a package from him because his parents, I thought, were rich. They lived in California, you know what I'm saying? And uh, man, we, every time Dale would send me something, it was like freaking, it was like Christmas. He sent me this Los Angeles Rams, like, helmet, like a plastic helmet with a Los Angeles Rams shirt. Oh, dude, that was like, I freaking loved wearing that thing. He sent me, like, a 1977 for my seventh birthday, Tops baseball card, the whole set. Oh, dude, that was like, I, that was literally, like, the best, like, best present I ever got. All right, anyway, there you go. Your old buddy Josh, a millionaire. So now you can take advice from me because they say, if your financial advisor is a millionaire, you shouldn't listen to him. Well, I just told you I am. So you can listen to me for financial advice. All right, love your thoughts. God bless.